welcome to another up close video. Today's one is looking at Tonic Showcase number seven, which is called the Exquisite Envelopes. And there's actually two die sets within this month's showcase, similar to I think it was the second, possibly the third showcase. I can't hundred percent remember. Um, but there was another one that we had in two separate A5 folders. So the showcases usually come with their magnetic sheet and um, a folder or um, plastic sleeve to store them in and so when they're in an A4 format they fit in the A4 storage folders and they have the popper folder and the A4 double sided magnetic sheet in them but for when you have two separate A5 ones they have the double sided magnetic A5 sheet in there but you also get them in these A5 uh, plastic folders which fit perfectly in the um, tonic craft kit folders or binders that you get every few months in a craft kit but they also fit perfectly in the designer's choice folder which is the duck egg blue one or just the generic a5 um, tonic die storage folder which is the orange one so i'll make sure to link those two below just in case you want a storage folder for them but they will also fit any generic um, ring binder that has just the two holes in it so if you find an a5 ring binder in the uk then um, this will fit in there really nicely and the two die sets are called um, Gilded Baronial Exquisite Envelope and Pretty Pocket Exquisite Envelope. I think I've put them back in the in the right packaging. Hopefully I have. Um, so that's what the two different die sets are called. And if you're looking at this and thinking this concept looks familiar to you, um, if you saw my unboxing video or if you got Tonic Craft Kit number 38, that was actually a similar kind of concept, but you actually have different elements in this one. You have a little flippy flappy bit in there as well, and it's actually bigger. So if I get one of the little ones that it makes and I place it inside this Tonic Craft Kit die set, um, this envelope would actually fit inside the larger one so if you already have this craft kit I'm sorry it's not available anymore because they sell out every month but um, if you already got this one kit number 38 then this showcase one would work really nicely in conjunction with it so I just thought I'd mention that in case anyone is looking at this um, showcase and thinking that that kind of concept is familiar to you so getting back to the actual die sets, I've got a couple of examples to show you just of these made up into their little wallets and they do fit a gift card in them. The um, one I just showed you from Tonic Craft Kit 38 was actually had like ample room around a gift card but these ones actually snugly fit a gift card inside them really nicely. Um, and I've also got an, an example to show you of mixing the two together to create some like double sided um, pocket system kind of thing. And then obviously I've also got some cards to show you as well because I couldn't leave you without some inspiration to make some cards with these die sets. And the sped up video that will be up um, tomorrow I think um, is three of the three cards that I'll show you as well. It's a sped up video making the cards. I'm not sure how long that video is going to be because I was I filmed it this morning and I decided to paper piece one of the cards and I probably sat there for like an hour and a half just paper piecing. So um, I will try and speed up a lot of the paper piecing or cut it out because I think it'll be a bit boring. But um, anyway, so these are the two main die sets. So we've got this one which is the Pretty Pocket, and this one you just need one of these, so you can cut that whole thing out in one go to create the actual um, pocket or you know gift card holder, it could just be for money as well, and this one actually has a built-in closure into it as well, it has a little tab at the top and the slit already cuts out for you. So this one is like the simplest of the two, just super duper easy to put together, you literally just cut that out, fold along all of the um, score lines, there's double lines on each um, side at about 5mm apart to make it a little sort of wallet and then you've got the glue tabs which these glue tabs it will fold up and they will stick along here on both sides and then you have these tiny little glue tabs here that stick to the bottom as well so you just um, fold that up and pull it round and um, you'll see how it goes together really easily when you um, die cut one out and fold it all up you'll see exactly how it goes together but really really simple to put together this one and a really lovely size I can give you an actual dimension I have tried a gift card in it and it does fit absolutely perfectly but an actual dimension of the area that will be inside it is three and a half inches 
by about two and an eighth inches um, so that is like the basic rectangular size that it sort of folds up into I could actually just measure a fully made one okay that's two and a quarter inches by three and a half so in that kind of region two and a eighth to two and a quarter by three and a half inches to make up the little wallet and then it has the five millimeter um sort of gusset or ridge around the edge of it and so this one folds up like this and is actually a pocket so the way these stick down it's actually a pocket however if you cut this one um, and you fold it all up like that and you put this um, slit through that slot or the flap through the slot you don't actually need any glue it would actually just all go together like this so if you wanted it to be able to like you fold this piece down as well you could just leave it um, and this little tab mechanism would actually hold it together enough um, in a, this little box kind of fashion without you actually having to glue it if you didn't want to so um, that's another cool uh, positive about it as well but it's a really gorgeous little pocket that you can decorate with all the different dies that I'll show you in a minute as well and I'll give you a better look at this um, once I've shown you all the dies and everything. So that is the main sort of die to create it. Then you get the um, plain edge, so you could just decorate it with pattern papers or inky papers that you've created, and then you get the gorgeous pattern to go inside it. And um, this is the pattern I was paper piecing on the card I just mentioned. So I die cut that in three times to a card and then uh, was paper piecing all the little squares. And then I decided to paper piece all the way around the little flowers as well. And then the little flowers I filled in with glitter. So there's actually a gorgeous floral design in there. It's kind of hard to see um, in die form but you'll see it on my project. Then you also have the same for the triangular portion of this pocket. So this is the bit that folds up at the front. So this is like the front of your pocket. Um, you have this gorgeous little design again very similar to the um, original or the one I just showed you but obviously it's in that kind of um, almost flag tail sort of shape with the indent in it um, and I think this is going to be a fun shape to put on your cards too I didn't actually use this on my card but if you think about it and you put this maybe on a square card perhaps put this one here and then move over like this you'll almost get like um, a hexagon in the middle because this is kind of like the very side bit of a hexagon and if you made this bit the same kind of length which is actually if I do it down here it's easier uh, about one and three quarter inches so if you made sure this gap between the two dies that you were cutting was one and three quarter inches you would get like um, a hexagon in the middle which I thought was really cool and then you could have a shaker like either side of a hexagon and I'm sure you've probably got hexagon layering dies that you could probably use in conjunction with it as well I don't think that's quite the right um, angles for a hexagon but you know it all sort of would go together or you could use any of these patterns to layer on top as well actually but yeah I think that's a cool die to have a really um, interesting unusual kind of a shape you could even cut it um, an aperture like this and then another one upside down to give a, a really weird wacky kind of shape even joining them together it would kind of um, well this bit was almost reminding me of like the bottom of a star but then I suppose if you cut it up the other way as well yeah, it would just give you some really wacky kind of aperture shapes, um, this kind of a die. So I think that's cool for your card making as well. And then you've got the pattern that goes inside. And then finally, um, because this one is actually, well actually both of them, neither of them have like um, an actual patterned panel to go in this area. Um, because this is kind of like a pocket, you don't really see the inside here. But you can easily just cut a rectangle of card to decorate the back of it. Or you could actually cut a rectangle and then cut... Um, this decorative piece into it to give you a decorative kind of pattern uh, patterned panel depending on what kind of um, pocket you're making whether it's going to open uh, whether it's going to be stuck onto something so it wouldn't matter if the back is plain or whether it's going to be a, a freestanding kind of pocket thing so um, there's lots of options with uh, putting extra panels onto that and then the final one you've got is actually like a complete tag with all the different layers so you've got this gorgeous shape actually which if you just cut this into your card would give you that gorgeous aperture never mind the little hole in the middle um, it would just give you that beautiful aperture um, and then you've also got the decorative patterns to go with it as well I actually um, 
cut this one twice, like once this way, once this way, into a card as well. And you got like a circle in the centre of it, which I thought was really cool. And you also get the edge to match that too. So if you were going with a patterned paper theme and you wanted the little tag, you've got the actual matte and layer to fit on top of that as well. But you can also have the decorative detail, which is very similar design to the other two with that crisscrossy kind of checkered pattern and then the gorgeous florals over the top as well. Um, and I think the idea is that if you didn't want to use it for a gift card, it could just be a little pocket on, on a card or inside a card um, that you could put lovely little messages on. You could have multiple little tags in there with different messages on. Or it could be a gift in itself and it could have little gift tags on for somebody else to use on presents for somebody. Or um, if you didn't want to put a gift card in it and you'd rather give um, like a folded up note or something, you could even... Um, create like a little slot in here or wrap some ribbon around it and attach like a folded up note onto a little tag that you would then pull out of the pocket as well so there, there are lots of different ways um depending on uh what kind of way you give your presents and what kind of presents you would give you know ways of using this wallet or just incorporating it into your card making or um I think I said this in that kit video with the uh, similar kind of design. If you like your project life and uh, uh, project sort of uh, pocket scrapbooking, um, this would actually fit inside one of the 3x4 pockets. It would give a little space around the edge, but you could even make it so it would more sort of squish flat so it's not like um, the 5mm around the edge. And, and then it would fit really nicely in a little pocket page if you wanted to do that as well. So lots of different ways of using these kind of die sets. And then the other one is called the Gilded Bar Baronial. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but... Um, this that's what this one's called and this one is slightly more complicated not really but just because you have to cut two of them whereas that one you just only had to cut the one to make the whole pocket but this one this is the main piece and you need two of them so you cut one cut another one and then stick them both together with the base so that this piece is over here and the flap at the top is down the bottom um, and that will create the entire sort of net of your box um, and then you just have the all of the edges will fold up and you have the little glue tabs here so you can secure them all together so basically it's a small little box that has a five millimeter wall on the edges but then all of the sides open obviously you could stick them down um, you know depending on what you're using it for you could make it actually yeah you could you could make it um, similar to this you could like stick these two and the bottom one over and keep the top one open and not use this glue tab here and you could actually have it as an opening pocket as well so there are different ways of um, turning this into a little uh, gift card holder or money holder or nice little note holder for inside a card or on the front of a card as well uh, this is my finished one. I actually did a magnetic closure for this one, but I'm sure you could get the buckle um, and the sort of belty part to actually work with having one on one side and one on the other. But I decided to just go for a magnetic closure. Although when I did that Kit 38 video, somebody kindly commented and said, um, if you were going to put a gift card in here, you might not want to do a magnetic closure just in case it messes with the magnetic strip on the gift card. So that's just something to think about um, if you are thinking of using it for gift cards. Um, but basically, this is how like the main mechanism works. And you can do any kind of, you know, um, mixture of different ways of sticking the panels down to give you different looks for this as well. But basically, um, you can see what I was saying about it's like a, a shallow little box with a 5mm side and then you've just got all of the panels. So you could fold these two and this one and stick it and then keep this one, don't stick the glue tabs on the edges and keep it as an opening so it's very similar to the other one but in a different kind of shape. Um, or you can keep it completely opening like this. You can thread ribbon through it as a way of closing it. So for mine, I've just added a little tag inside. I've just used the little tag dies that I'll show you as well. Um, but yeah, so you could easily just fit a gift card in there too, or multiple gift cards, depending. I mean, yeah, you might want to give a gift to a family and you could put multiple gift cards in there, one for each person or something. I'm sure it would fit four or five in there. So the rest of this die set is all of the little decorative 
panels so you have again you've got all of the plain edges so that you could just use pattern paper or something inky that you've made yourself um, you've also got the gorgeous patterns in here which is like um, a diagonal lattice kind of design with more of a puffy pom-pom sort of a flower on there um, and then that design carries across for the other flap and also for the tag as well so it's a different shaped tag but the tag also fits inside um, either of the boxes so if I bring this tag over you can see how this one would fit inside here as well so you really can um, mix and match or make a set of tags and mix up the two different shapes but in one of the little folders as well and then the final two pieces are the sort of um, latch mechanism that you could use in conjunction um, with you know any of the sticking down kind of pieces you just got to fiddle around with it really see what goes with the design that you you want to create and stuff but you've got options for the closure mechanism which is really lovely and you could even um, incorporate this buckle onto this one as well even though that does have its own closure mechanism there's nothing to say you have to keep that you could um, block up this little slot and use the buckle there and have this piece attached to here and then you thread that through the buckle so you can really can mix them as well which is lovely and also saying that you know what I was saying about this piece um, using this decorative piece to create um, a pattern panel for the main uh, back of it again you could pull that one across and use it on here to create um, a pattern panel for the back of this one too so you really can mix them and you also don't just have to use them like these outer shapes you don't have to use them as they are you can trim into them and or add extra fold lines to create different effects as well so i'll show you that sample now just so you can kind of um see where i what i'm what i mean about changing it around so i made this i just really quickly just put this together this morning um just using blue and white card so you could see the difference so anything that is cut from white is from this die set and anything cut from the blue is from this die set so you could just see where i got them from basically but i just thought it would be nice to show you how you can snip into it to create different elements so firstly i've got this bit of baker's twine going around which i actually um sandwich between the two of them when I stuck them together so the baker's twine is actually you know sandwiched between and then so on the first side for this one that baker's twine is actually holding that shut so that's using two of this and it's holding that shut for me um, and I've just added the bow just to the top one so I didn't actually need to use the ribbon as my closure because I had the twine going around the edge as the closure and then inside this is actually one of this so I cut this but then I trimmed off both sides of this so basically where this starts to curve around here I just trimmed it um, straight across like here so like maybe five millimeters in from each end tr completely trimmed that off so it got rid of all the glue tabs and those uh, foldy lines down the side and then I added some extra score lines in so it the closure mechanism still works the little um, tab still goes through the slot really nicely I did have to trim off um, a slight little part of the peak up here because of the extra score line and I, I added in but you can see there I added in a third score line so that it kind of concertinas down um, and actually makes it smaller because obviously if you kept it just with these score lines it's exactly the same size as the white one so it wouldn't have quite fitted inside um, but I just added that extra score line to create like an extra little flappy element I mean you could even um, again with the money idea you could put coins in there and then this would kind of keep the coins contained um, within there as well so they wouldn't sort of slide out as someone opened it or shook it around or something so I just thought I'd show you how you can turn this one into something that could go inside something else and then obviously this just doesn't just have to be in this little box it could be on a card inside a card on a scrapbook page on a journal page you know all sorts of different uh, places you could use it and then that just closes back up again and then on the other side of it I stuck um, another one of these this is the this one fully made up 
but I had also cut an extra of this one like this and I didn't need this top flap for what I wanted to do so I just snipped that off and added the top flap here and used the hole in it to tie some more ribbon through again but then this is actually just the same closure mechanism just that comes on this one and then you've just got an envelope over here and I've just used part of this so I've just snipped off that section and shortened the edges just to create like an extra little piece that could just go inside here which you could even have hanging out like that depending um, what kind of look you're going for and even yeah you could do that actually you could cut this but not uh, just cut like um, a glue tab on this portion and then actually take this folding mechanism here this part with the hole in the sort of flap area and stick it onto here to actually give you that kind of a, a closure as well so you can really mix and match them and take the fancy edge off of one and put it on another or maybe even Oh, that would be a good idea. So if you cut this piece twice, just that portion, with that tab um, and this side piece, then you could stick those onto the side of here. So cut the glue tabs off of this one, stick those two sides on here, they would fold in, and then this one would come over and that one would lock into it. So that would give you another completely different look as well. So you really can, like, Frankenstein um, and put these together by cutting off different pieces from different die cuts as well. So I just thought I'd, um, you know, show you a few little possibilities of how you might want to mix and match the die sets together, considering you do get both of them. You know, you might as well make use of mixing, mixing them together. So, then I've also got one sample for each of them, which you've kind of just seen already, but this was just um, the little one that I created with um, the first die set, which is... I think I've got these names the right way around, I'm sorry if I haven't, but this is the Pretty Pocket. And then I've just done a little tag to go inside there, just layering up that beautiful design. You can see how it's just a uh, crisscross design with lovely flowers, which looks nice in a landscape or a portrait orientation as well, which is lovely. I did also put a little bit of card inside there to kind of line the inside as well. And I also used um, the panel to sort of line the inside of this flap too, just out of the same colour card that I cut it from. And then you've got the gorgeous pattern on the front there against some silver silk cardstock um, and that gorgeous little pattern here. And if you think this area looks too blank because you don't get a decorative piece for this because of the... Um, the slit that's in there. I just cut a couple of strips of cardstock from the same colours that I'd been using and added them on there and that when this is then closed it just gives you a little bit of extra decoration down the bottom on the front as well and then for the back of it I just cut um, an extra rectangle of card. I think it was eight centimetres by five centimetres um, to get that little rectangle on the back so really nice and simple to do um, and you could even leave these tags coming out of it actually from the tag that's inside the little strings and you, yeah you could tie that onto your present like that and it could be just the the tag inside is actually providing you with the strings or you could attach strings inside actually you could stick them going along that channel and just poking out one end and then you could actually tie this as um, a gift tag onto a present as well maybe you want to uh, maybe you don't want to make them a card because you know that they might not keep it or um don't have place to display it but you could write them a little letter or something and put it inside that and then it can be the gift tag on the present and then this is the other one uh which is the gilded baronial i think that's how you say it i don't know um and then this is just showing how i've just left all of these flaps loose and i've done the magnetic closure on this one so basically all I did you can still see the magnets in here actually so I just stuck a magnet to um, basically just over the hole on this one they're the um, 10 millimeter by 1 millimeter neodymium magnets that you can just find them on eBay um, they're usually pretty reasonable I'd say um, and then I've just punched out a little circle of cardstock to hide it and then I've done the same thing on this one um, making sure the poles of the magnet will actually clip together and then I've just covered that by putting the buckle on there and then the actual strap that kind of goes through the buckle so it looks like it works like a proper buckle but it's less fiddly because it's just got the magnetic closure and I did even put some tiny little brads through the holes on the buckle as well they're not holding it in place they're just um, decorative really but um, 
tiny little brads do work really nicely on there. You could use some larger ones as well, but it might interfere with this buckle going through if you were going to use it as an actual buckle. But the little ones work really nicely. Um, and then I've just done a little bit of the luxury embossed card on the back of it as well. And you can see the gorgeous panels on here. And I haven't actually used all of the decorative ones. I didn't actually use the decorative ones on here. I just cut them from the solid pattern of card. And you can see how you can also use all of the basic shapes to line the box as well which is really nice so that is my two little samples and then I've got three cards to show you as well which will be the sped up video so um, I kept with a lovely bluey kind of colour scheme for them and I really like how they turned out I think they're just like fun ways of using the dies I mean this one on the right does actually just look like a normal die set it looks like you just used a normal patterned kind of die um, you know a little rectangle design so it, you you don't even know that it's like from a 3d die set and I basically just took quite a while paper piecing in all those different pieces using some glitter cardstock and some um, iridescent cardstock as well and then for the flowers I could have pieced all those bits back in but I'd spent way too long already so um, I just used some silver glitter on there, I think it was silver tinsel glitter uh, just to fill those final areas in and then I just finished it with a little Dymo label as well so really really simple card um, but really effective and it's really relaxing to paper piece as well the, obviously the easiest parts were all of the squares but these weren't actually too fiddly there's just some tiny little pieces like this little triangle and the couple of little slivers in that little triangle they're like the hardest pieces to put in so it's a pretty simple one to do and I was intermittently using my uh, Nouveau embellishment tool as well I'm, just, I'm so used to doing it just with my fingers that I tend to forget to use this but um, in some cases it was really helpful getting the little pieces in so um, it's good to have that kind of a tool in case you need it so that's that card then um, this was using some of the patterned panels but again um, well this one kind of looks more like you did use some kind of die set that maybe wasn't you know designed to make a card with because of the sort of odd shapes but I think it goes really nicely it gives like um, it almost looks like a pennant banner shape because you've got that bit at the bottom and you've added the height with the other two die cuts on top it, it gives that um, well, it makes it look like you've done it on purpose obviously we have done it on purpose but you know it looks like it could have been some kind of die set that went together in three different levels to cut something out and then you also had that little circle that appeared in the middle from the two um, semicircles that were sort of missing from this design because it, this is for the tag um, and the hole would be there um, and I just did one up one way one up the other way which is really nice because it mirrors the design across which is lovely and then I just used the um, sort of uh, flag tail banner sort of piece that goes on the pocket down the bottom as well and I love that they kept the designs consistent through all the different panels in the pockets so that you could do this kind of effect but equally you could have um, mixed in this one as well I mean the circle's not quite the same like this is a shallower part of the edge of the circle than the other one but it would have still given you that circular kind of effect to um, put two of these opposite each other as well and mixing it in with this one or even the one from the other die set as well you could have had this kind of a look oh actually yeah you could even get the circle effect with this one because you could um, like do those two together maybe or well, this one circle is actually much more similar to the other one so you could have actually used that to complete the circle with the panel from the other set as well. So, you know, really, you can really mix and match. If you like the look of this card, you can really mix and match with all of the different ones that are in there. And even you could have done this um, in a more landscape fashion, maybe using some of these as well. You could have had like two of them in the centre and then this one on either end. Oh, it almost looks like a fish with that as like a tail. Um, but yeah, there's loads of different ways that you could uh, use those in conjunction with each other to create a cool card like this. And then the background, you'll see I was just cutting up all the scraps of card that I had left over after I'd finished paper piecing um, to create a stripy background. And then I just raised this up on 3D foam to... Um, uh, well it kind of, because there's mirror card and stuff behind there, adding the little bit of height on it, it gives you that little bit of shadow or reflection in them to kind of... Uh, give you a little bit of a different sort of a look to your project and then I've just done a Dymo label again 
And then the final one is just using the buckle. I thought it was quite a cool um, design and the way it had like rather large hole pieces that come out of it I thought it'd be fun to paper piece them back in in, in different colours um, you know because I was I knew I was going to cut multiple colours for a card I might as well use those interior pieces but you could have just used the interior pieces by themselves um, I mean sticking them perpendicular to each other to create little crosses on your design or little plus marks or um, even using the little dots that fall away as well, you could do a cool pattern with just dots and crosses which would look really lovely as well. So I mean if you were multi-batch making these, if you were making the actual little folders with the buckles you wouldn't need all the bits that fall away so you could make use of them for um, a card project as well. And then the sentiment on this one is one of those ones um, from the floral frames I think they were called why can I never remember what they're called but I think it was called you're the best the dice set I think I managed to link to it the last time I used it so um if it's still there I will link to it again below the video um but yeah I just thought it's a cool like funky looking card they almost look like little aliens with big eyes or something but um, I just thought it was cool and using them this way rather than the other way sort of stops you thinking of them as a buckle um but yeah I thought that was really cool and you could have just you could do it this way or that way as well um, as a landscape or portrait design. So um, I hope you enjoyed this up close video giving you a look at the Tonic Showcase number 7 which is the exquisite envelopes and you've got two different designs within the showcase set as well that come with the magnetic sheet in the A5 folders and then I've just given you a few card making ideas but don't forget anything I've shown you on here like the paper piecing you can do that on the little folders as well and you could create your own stripy patterned paper um, with all your leftovers cut them with the solid shape and then put the um, detailed die over the top of them to incorporate this onto one of the little folders as well and then you've also got a couple of the little folders that I'd done and then also this kind of wacky one that was combining both different die sets together to give some kind of like really interactive sort of um, gift to give somebody. I'm sure like um, a child would find this really fascinating to keep opening and finding different things hidden inside it. Almost like one of those um, magic pockets that you kind of, you you put a £10 note in it and then if you opened it the opposite way around it would have disappeared. You know, it, it kind of gives me that sort of vibe, having the, the double-sided element to it and stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this up close video and it gave you a few ideas of how to use your die set and don't forget if you already have kit number 38 um, I think these two die sets will go really nicely with this um, and give you a few more options of um, layering things inside each other like I've shown you here or just using the decorative panels onto the, um, the one from kit 38 as well you can mix and match the panels as well so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.